Okay, good morning. I shared the screen you're able to see. Yes, yes, in the share, I'm able to see. So yesterday we have seen the introduction to Linux and also some of the basic concepts like what is ISO, what is boot process, what is run levels, and what yeah, yeah. Is all that stuff. Any questions from previous class? Uh, no, no answers. All right, okay. So we'll see some of the basic commands uh, today. Most of them you might already know. So we'll just go through firstly, and then we'll go to some of the advanced commands. Okay. So, I mean, uh, most of the daily used commands, I think you might be already knowing, which is present working directory, ls, lsf and lrt, yeah. uh, copy, move, and all that stuff, right? Yeah. So, so let us say, uh, if I type lsf and lrt, so what are the things it will display? The first thing, it will display whether it's a directory or file, right? Yeah. yeah. If the directory, it will show D. If it is a file, it will show Python. If it is a soft link, it will show L, and if it is a block file, B, it will show. Okay. Next thing is the permissions, right? So what are the yeah. permissions? So we have uh, a different uh, syntax. Uh, we have notation, right? So read is four, write is two, execute is one. Okay. So this is a, a user, current user. This is a group he belongs to. This is for others, right? Yeah. So. <coughs> And the next thing is uh, number of uh, files or number of directories in the uh, number of files in the directory. Next is the username, the group name, and the size of the directory, and the date when it is modified, and the file name. Right. So these are the different uh, attributes of uh, LSF and LRT output. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you if you take a file, like for example, this is a file. So it has read write permission. It, uh, group user has read write permission. Group has read permission. Others has read permissions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then this is one file, and the root is the username. Root is the group name. This is the size of the file. This is last. It is modified, and this is the file name. Right. Okay. Uh, how do we find out uh, attributes of a file? File. Let us say when it is modified, when it is accessed, when it is created. Right. Okay. So there is something called stat and the file name. Okay, stat and the file name. So this basically will give when it was accessed, uh, when it uh, when it was modified, when it was changed. 
So this change access is modified. And and also the permissions, blocks, number of blocks, size, etc. etc. it will do. What is this address zero six double four? Uh, this is the uh, permissions actually. See, okay. This is six. This is four. This is four. Okay. okay. Access. This is. Uh, these are called access uh, control. So it's about the permissions. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, and the device FD zero. That is a memory address location or what? Yeah, yeah. It's a address location of the file. Okay. So yeah. what do we have? Uh, so generally, uh, the uh, for example, I want to create a directory. Make dir is a command, right? So uh, let us make, let us say I want to create a complete path like slash a slash b slash c slash slash d. And uh, uh, if I want to create uh, manually, how do I create uh, something like mkdir slash a, then mkdir slash b, mkdir slash c, right? Mm -hmm. Let us say slash a slash b. Slash it slash one. One. I want to create this way. Okay. Inkdir was will fail because under slash a slash b is not there. Without slash b we cannot slash c. We cannot create slash c. Without slash yeah. c we cannot create one. Right? What is the direct command? So the command is inkdir hyphen p slash a slash b slash c slash one. This is like. So last year is not a direct. Okay, I think there is a file with that name. Okay, let us say I'll create that here. Okay. So this is basically it will create a path even though B doesn't exist. It will create recursively. So this okay. is like creating a path. Okay. Yeah. So if I go inside slash A slash B slash C one, it's a directory. There is nothing in the directory. Yeah. Okay. So next thing is, uh, yeah, when I say when we say LSF and LRT on the node, it will display uh, the permissions as well, right? So how do we change the permissions? So we have two mm -hmm. commands: ch mode and ch vote. Ch one is to change the username and the group name. Ch mode is to change the permissions, right? Oh, 777 yeah. indicates that it has all the permissions. Uh, yeah. uh, seven means read plus write plus execute. Mm -hmm. For example, I want to give only read and write to everyone. I have to give five, 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 right? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, six, six, six. For read is four, uh, write yeah. is two, right? So six, six, yeah, six yeah. is read and write for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, <laughs> I just want to give read and execute no write permission. So five, five, five. Read plus execute. Read is four, execute is one, right? So uh, that way yeah. we need to. Give. So, for example, let us say uh, there is also one command to touch. Touch will just create a file and empty yeah. file, right? File eight nine zero one. So, if I say file eight nine zero one, so this is created with the permissions of read, write, read, read, read. 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 So, how is created? I I want to, every time the file to be created with some specific permission. What is the command I need to modify? Right. So by default, this file is created. It, it created with some permissions. Right. Yeah. I want to modify that. I want to create. Let us say it's created. With <coughs> it's created with read and write. Read and read. That means six, six, four, four. Right. So let us say I want to create with six, six, six. How do I do that? So there is something called U mask. So okay. by default, U mask is zero zero. Two two. Let us say zero two two. This we okay. need to subtract from six 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 to get the okay. permissions for a file. Right. So okay. it will be six four four. Right. Okay. So let us say I want to set it to six six six. So let us say I'll set okay. U mask equal to zero zero. U mask is zero zero zero. So if I set that file eight nine one two, this is another file. And if I say file eight nine zero two. So it is created with read write six, six. read write read write. How is it created? I have to subtract from six 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 minus zero zero zero. Two. You mark. So it is six six six. 
that means it is filled with read write read write read write right okay so by default you you mask is 0 to 2 for a file right okay. so we have sub so to get the permissions we need to subtract from 666 for a directory we need to subtract the 777 okay so for directory it will be created with this permission 755 We can create the sorry, uh, sorry to disturb. Uh, we can create the directory with the default like uh, without using umask. Uh, I can create mkdr m seven five 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 whatever the permission I required seven seven five directory name. It will create with yeah. that permissions. Correct, correct. Yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, that also is one way. The other way is uh, by default we don't have to specify anything. Just mkdr also will create using umask. Okay. Okay. Uh, so how do we change the permissions of a file? Let us say file eight nine zero. Sorry, one. Okay. So it is uh, read write six or four. Let us say I want to change it to seven seven seven. Eight more seven 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 file eight nine zero one. So this will create. A, it will give all permissions to everyone. Let us say I want to remove the permission from others. Execute okay. permission. So the syntax is 0 x file 8901. This is also one way, right? We have different syntaxes. Okay? Oh, okay. The execute permission is removed. In the same way, I want to remove execute permission for everyone. Just type an exit. It will remove for everyone. Okay? Yeah. Let us say I want to add for everyone. Plus x will add for everyone. Okay? So let us say I want to uh, uh, remove write permission for uh, user and others. So write permission is removed for user and others. So okay. we can play with it. We can have, we can use numbers, or we can use plus or minus, or we can use for everyone. If we, if we just don't give anything, it is for everyone. If we give something, it is for that for uh, for that particular group, right? Okay. 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 So have you used SCP anytime? SCP command uh, to transfer yeah, yeah. the files. Yeah. Okay. So uh, generally, we can transfer from this machine to another machine, or we can get the file from that machine either mm -hmm. using FTP or SCP, right? So yeah. in the same way, we have Telnet and SSH. Telnet listens on port 23, SSH listens on port 22. So Telnet is like uh, uh, when we uh, you know give the username and the password on on the terminal, it can be. Uh, cracked or it can be, you know, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, this, this is a, like, I mean, a security, uh, somebody can hack it over the wire. Whereas SSH is encrypted, the password whichever we enter, it goes in an encrypted format, so always it is recommended to use SSH. In the same way, instead of FTP, SCP, secure copy protocol, FTP file transfer protocol, right? So, uh, so it's always recommended to use SSH over a telnet. It's always recommended to use SCP over SCP, uh, FTP, right? So yeah. you might be knowing what is the syntax of FTP. So we log into a machine. Let us say some machine. Okay, FTP is not there. I'll go to another machine. Maybe. So I provide the password and uh, username and the password. Login is failed. Why? Okay, password is wrong. Okay, so it's logged in. So always we need to use two commands. One is bin 
transfer in binary format mm-hmm. hash it will show hashes to, sh- to see the how much it is transferred so let us say i'm transferring some something called put is to uh, put, copy the file from our current machine to the remote machine right yeah so so this is now you are already knowing you already yeah, know all these things so yeah. mput is for basically uh, transferring the, the multiple file. files right multiple files i can transfer it will ask you want to copy or not okay so seems like this file does not exist okay i mean said so using uh, this exclamatory mark i can go to the directory So let us say I, I transfer some file. Let us say this is the file. Input. So this will give the hashes because I have given HA in the terminal, right? Okay. And always it's 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 be good if we give BA because it will transfer in the binary format. Sometimes when we are transferring the files, the files may get corrupted if we don't give okay. binary, right? Okay, BA is to come out of the terminal. So. we have mission a we have mission b i'm transferring something from mission a to mission b that time i need to ftp to mission b and use put so this will copy a file from a to b right in the same way i want to get something from mission b so i do ftp to mission b and i do get get or m get yeah. m get will copy multiple files and i can specify something like a, a while called like star so a b c star So A, B, C, one, two, three, four, whatever the files they match that particular criteria, that will be copied to the machine A. So if I want to put uh, copy the files to machine B, I need to give, use put. Okay. So what is the host name? I'm inside the simulator. So I'll come back to my Linux machine. And what is the next thing? SCP. SCP. How do you use it? How do we use it? SCP and the file mm-hmm. name. Let us say. You asking something? No, no, no. Okay. The CP file name and then let us say some machine name and temp. Okay. So this will copy the file eight nine zero to a machine called this machine and colon and this is the directory it will be copied, right? Okay, so this is service is not known because uh, because I'll take some other host name is available IP. Let us just see if it's two three zero one. Yes, and the password. Let's see if there's someone else modified the password. Let us try and use some other machine. Okay, the file is transferred. So if we transfer huge file, it will also show the progress the percentage is copied. So now I copy it from this machine to the other machine. How do I copy from in the other way? CP root temp. And the file name. Let us say that file is file eight nine zero two, and the directory where I want to copy. I want to copy it to start. Means local directory, current directory. Enter. So it will copy the other way. We copy it from machine A to machine B. We can copy from machine B to machine A. Right? The same file will copy it to the my local machine currently in the current directory. So how do I copy the entire directory? <clears throat> so the answer is scp-r. This will okay. copy the directory and all the file contents inside directory to the destination machine, right? So rm is to remove a file. Rmdir is to remove a directory. Rm minus rf is to remove everything recursively. right yeah. so you also know the difference between absolute path and uh, relative path right so 
slash a b what is the right to be created a a b c for right if i do pwd a a b b c c so if we give complete path properly that is called absolute path okay <coughs> if we just give something like dot 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 okay this is called regenerative path okay okay so in the scripts in the shell scripting or anywhere it's always good to use the full path because we don't know if we if i am in this directory the relative path will change if i execute the same thing again the relative path will be different right i'll be in slash whereas if i execute yeah. this i always will be in the proper directory okay so that is the difference between the relative path and absolute path what is dot dot one directory up what is dot dot and dot dot two directories up right Oh, yeah. What is the delta? Home directory. It is the home directory of the user, right? Yeah. What is cd minus? Down the one. The previous, previous directory. For yes, example, yes. I am in temple, and if I want to go back to cd minus, it will take me to the cd a a b b c. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, some more things like uh, uh, you know how to do the reverse search control. R. Right. Then, if I type any of the unique keyword, it will list me the command which I have executed. Let us say if an ls, I just typed ls, it will give the full command, right? So, any command, for example, in your project-specific commands, you might be executing so many very very big commands, right? And I want to re-execute the same command, so I don't have to type everything. I can just do Control R, then ls R P. Okay, that command I have not. Let's say let's have to domain. Oh, it's not there. Our it is not installed. Maybe I'll log into some other machine. Or let us say we just did SCP, right? So I just type SCP. So it it will give the full command. So I can just press enter. It is again like executing the full command, right? So this is a, a useful. especially when we are executing a very big commands and it's applicable uh, only in bash right so if you are using uh, like ax so there is something called uh, escape character right you would have used it so type on 0 bi okay then <laughs> escape uh, slash wait i'll log into one machine have you used it any time uh no actually i used in ax but linux um, uh, in ax i escape slash if you give the command it will give the history right it search from history ah okay okay so yeah that's what i wanted to show right right so well, how, but in linux i don't know <laughs> yeah linux right. like control r control r control r is exactly same as the search what we do in ax right smaller so same small, thing smaller smaller huh? yeah yeah smaller control r in bash okay. terminal control r okay. if you give it will do reverse i search then you do ls then it will give whatever the command full command we executed right and if you press control r continuously it will give the history what and all we executed okay okay and also i mean unlike ax linux is very simple very easy for example uh, i just uh, typed ls f l r t and i want to go back to the First letter. Control A is to go back to first. Control E is to come to end, right? Control W is to remove the one of the uh, distinct words. Okay. Control U is to remove the complete line. So let's say if an alert, I just type something then. Control U will remove everything. Okay. These are some of the bash properties. Okay. Shell properties. Sorry. Control U will remove everything on the line. Control U will take the beginning of the line. Control U to the end. Control R is the reverse search. Search the history based on a word. Control W will remove the word. Okay. Uh, <coughs> and also the redirection operator, right? So let us say LSF in LRT output. I redirect to a file. How do I redirect? File. Eight nine zero one. This will redirect it to a new file. If the file doesn't exist, still create a file, right? Mm -hmm. If the file
file is already existing it in overwrite. Okay. LSF and LRT output will be redirected to this file, right? Yeah. Cat is to open up, open the file. In the same way, if I do same thing with the, let us say date command. So I just executed date command. And if I again say file 8901, that over old contents are overwritten, right? So yeah. this is a redirection operator, single greater than. If the file doesn't exist, it will create. If the file is already existing, it will overwrite. Okay. So how do I append it to the file? The command is double greater than. This will append it to the file, right? So there are two dates display. Yeah. Okay. Even if the file doesn't exist, it will create a new file. If the file is already existing, it will append. That is the redirection operator. In the same way, what is pipe operator? So basically, for uh, sending output of one command to another command, we use redirection operator, right? Okay. So how do I search for a particular pattern in a output? The command is grip. Global regular expression print. Let us say LSF and LRT grip file. So it will list all the files which has file in their name, right? What is the command? Grip file. Mm -hmm. Let us say I want to do uh, case insensitive search. Means capital I and F also it will display. Capital L, L also it will display. For example, I have file, capital file, file, capital L. Okay. So general search will not uh, give this search. Like capital F is missing, right? So if I do mm -hmm. hyphen I, case ins insensitive search. Capital F also will be displayed. Capital L also will be displayed. The files with capital F in their name or capital L in their name will be displayed with the hyphen I. I. Let us say I want to, yeah, I. I want to print the, li uh, the lines which doesn't contain file. Grip hyphen V. Hyphen V is for the negative search, right? So it will display the files which doesn't, which doesn't contain file in their output. Okay. okay. And there are also some other uh, commands like, uh, let us say I create a file or I'll open some file. We extract a search. Or uh, some way of class dot by. Okay, let us say this is one file. And uh, uh, this one. Okay. Let us say I'll create a file, file 890. Uh, this is VA editor. So we have editors to uh, modify or work on the files, now, like how we have notepad in Windows, right? So VA and VAM. VA is the default editor, VAM is the VA improved version. Okay? okay. So VAM, let us say file 890. And uh, there are two modes. What are the modes in editors? Insert. Escape mode and command mode. Okay. Uh, insert mode and uh, command uh, escape mode, which is command mode. So basically, uh, by default, we will be in the escape mode. So we have to uh, move to the insert mode to append or write something. So I just press I. So I'll insert something. Let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. Then how do I save? I, I have to come back to the escape mode by pressing escape. Then colon W Q is to save, right? So cat file 890 will give me the commands. So cat file 890, let us say I want to display lines, two lines, after matching the pattern, let us say four. Grip hyphen A, two, four. Means it will display commands after, A means after, four. So it will match the pattern, four. Then it will display two lines. Right, so three lines will be displayed. One is the current line, the other is the whatever we specified is the fourth line. Then after the two lines, right? Okay. Then hyphen B means before. So two three will be displayed before the pattern matching, right? Okay. Let us say I gave one only, so it will display one line only. Okay. A means after, B means before. Okay. One. 
so the general uh, uh, i open a file and then you know uh, how do i copy the lines but the why why is to copy paste to paste we can paste as many times as we want right and how do i copy multiple lines let us say i want to copy 10 lines for the command go to escape mode 10 why why then yeah. p so 10 lines will be printed <clears throat> what is the command to cut what is the this thing to cut dd is to cut dd and p right so this way we can open different files and let's save it okay now in the same way uh, if i want to do case insensitive search colon set ic right how do i set the line numbers set number mm. okay how do i remove the number set no number mm. So you might be using all these things generally in, while working on the files, right? Yeah. But this uh, grab to iPhone uh, A24, this first time I am seeing. <laughs> okay, okay. So I, I want okay. to save without, I want to quit without saving. Q, Okay. is the command. Okay. Let us say I want to open two files. Okay. Two files simultaneously. V, I, M hyphen o file 890 and file let us say file 8902 okay so this will open two files uh, horizontally right okay so how do i go back how do i switch between the commands uh, files control w control w if you press it will, you will go to the first file control w if you press you will go to the second file Okay, so something like we can do copy also. Y Y I copied on the first file. Control W two times. P it will paste on okay. the second line. So line one is copied to second file. Okay, yeah. then I save it. So I opened in a horizontal way. How do I open in a vertical way? This is very much useful when you are you know comparing two files or working on okay. two files, right? So let us say I want to copy 10 lines. So what do I do? 10 y y control w then p so it will paste all the 10 lines to the other file 10 lines to the second file then we need to save it yeah. save okay. second file first then first file so what is the okay. command vim hyphen o is open in the horizontal way vim hyphen capital o will open in a vertical way so it is like okay. a, Side by side, you can compare both the files and see what are the differences, who modified what, that kind of stuff. Okay. Right. So, uh, one more thing like uh, head and tail, you know, right? So, let us say I have file 890. I want to display first two lines. How do I do? Cat file eight nine zero and head head hyphen the first two lines. In yeah. the same way, tail hyphen two will display last two lines. Last. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Let us say I want to display from uh, fourth line to sixth line. How do I do that using head and tail? Cat file eight nine zero. I want to display fourth line to sixth line. So let us say I'll do head iPhone six, right? So mm -hmm. these are my six lines. I want to display last two lines. They okay. are from fourth to sixth, right? So these are the oh, yeah. fourth to sixth lines, right? So this okay. is how we can combine different commands together using pipe operator. So using okay. this combination from any number of lines to any number of lines. Let us say I have thousand line with a file with 1000 lines, I want to display from 500 to 600. How do I display? Yeah. Basically, cat file, then tail of head 600, then tail 100. So last 100. 100 to 100, you know, 500 to 600 lines will be displayed. Okay? Yeah. Let us say I have a current directory and I want to display file with maximum size. Okay? Using the combination. How do I do that? So du will display all the file names. Let us say du dot will display <coughs> current 
right? Oh. So based on the delimiter, it will it will limit it. It will uh, cut into different parts, right? So this is useful when we are writing set scripts. Okay. This is cut. Cut. C is C is the uh, option. What is the character? Okay. Yeah. C basically. Uh, C also we can use if we know exactly like these are the number of characters every time I will get in a command. Let us say okay. unim hyphen in a command. First five. Five line, first five characters. Either I'll get line X or A X, right? So I want to okay. cut that. How do I cut? I can C, and I can specify something like uh, C one two five. Then remove this thing. It will list whether it's a line X operating system or A X operating system, right? Yeah. So in most of our scripts, what we use, we have to check whether it's a uh, line X OS or uh, uh, AX. So based on that, we need to execute command. So because some of the time, most of the times, uh, not most of the times actually, very few commands will be different in case of Linux and AX, right? Okay. Have you used any time the CFGMGR command on AX? Uh, a command again? What command? CFGMGR. CFGMGR. Yeah. CFGMGR is something like let us say I have added a new disk. To the machine oh, okay. to AX machine, right? So LHPV output will not show directly. So when we execute CFG and GR, it will reconfigure the database, the disks available, right? So once we execute CFG and GR, uh, the new disk will appear. So it is like a refreshing the uh, disk data. Okay. Okay. Not only that, any device. Let us say you have added an interface, or uh, you did, did you have done some modification. So if we want to uh, that configuration to be refreshed, we have to do CMG MDR. Okay. In the same way, there is something called part probe in Linux. Okay. Part probe will basically do the same thing what CMG MDR does in AX. It will do reconfigure. Okay. So we'll see that Linux volume manager commands later. Uh, so just a heads up. So LSPV, you know, right? How do how LSPV will display the disks available on the AX machine? LSPV. Right? LS, LSPV, physical volumes, list of physical volumes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The same way we have uh, something called. Uh, yeah, yeah, I need um, that uh, thing because uh, sometimes uh, uh, our file discretization is almost completed in uh, my uh, one of the file system. And I just mm -hmm. want to see how much volume is available to add that particular. Uh, I need that concept. Okay. Uh, the volume groups concept uh, and uh, yeah. file system yeah, yeah. and logic. How do we extend a, a file yeah, yeah. system uh, using uh, extend VG or extend uh, this thing, right? This yeah, thing yeah. you want to. And uh, uh, how much uh, space is there in the disk? That is what you yeah. said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you use this uh, CHFS, right, to uh, increase the file system space. CHFS hyphen A. Do you use that? I um, as of now, I didn't think this, but I just want to learn how to check whether the volume is, uh, um, is there or not in the particular uh, volume group. That's why I need some that comments to check. Whether. Okay, okay, yeah. We'll have a session. Uh, basically, the, that's called actually Linux volume manager in case of Linux. And in AX okay. also, we'll see uh, how do we create a volume group, logical volume, file system, and how do we mount and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know NS uh, lookup, right? NS lookup? NS, NS lookup is basically NS. for, uh, you know, checking, uh, uh, getting IP from hostname or getting for hostname from IP, right? Okay. So, let us say okay. I want to get like this. I want to find out the IP of a remote machine. Okay. So this is the IP, this is the name, right? Okay. So, if I mm -hmm. say new, and this lookup and the IP, it will give me the host name. Host name, okay. Right? Uh, let us say in the same way, ping is to find out whether the remote machine is up and running. Right? Not, uh, yeah. It will send the packet and it will check whether the machine is up and running. If it is a 0% loss, it means that the machine is up. If it is 100% loss, that means the machine is, has some problem and it is not pinging. Then we need to yeah. log into the console and see what is the problem. Right? Okay. Or uh, yeah. 
uh, the machine is slow, it will the packet receiving the packets will be uh, in between some zero to hundred. Okay. Yeah. Yes, we have. So, yeah, so every process will listen on some port. So to list out the port, net start hyphen n is the command, right? So this is this is basically the port and the process which is listening on the port. Okay. These are the different okay. different ports. Okay. And uh, let us say I want to copy uh, all the files inside one directory to another machine, right? So let us say uh, I have created a directory called uh, cd test123. Okay. So I have file called, I will just create a dummy file, patch123456. So these are the files, right? I am inside a directory called root test123. I want to copy the same thing to other machine. How do I do that? One way is to use this. SCP. SCP. Yeah. But uh, let us say this is huge in size, in very big. How do I do? Oh. How do I transfer? So there is option like uh, I can tar it. What is tar? Yeah. I can compress. Uh, tar compress. CV. CV. Yeah. I can CV. And let us say I, I want to name as a test dot tar. Then test. dot. Okay. Mm -hmm. What happened? File is the archive. It is created. Test.tar is created out of these yeah. files, right? Yeah. Then I, I can do SCP to other machine and I can extract. How do I extract? It? And I can do ganjip uh -huh. or ggip also. ggip test.tar, right? It oh, can create oh. a .ggip extension. So the, fi oh. the file size is reduced. So let us say now it's 10,000, it's 177. Yeah, yeah. So then I can do SCP, then I, I have to unzip. Uh -huh. Unzip test.tar. This, then tar hyphen xvf yeah. yeah, it will extract. Okay. Yeah. So what is the way to transfer multiple files uh, huge in size from machine A to machine B? First we need to tar uh, compress them into one file and after compressing then we need to uh, dip it dip and it. after that send it using a CP then do the uh, exactly opposite of uh, extracting then uh, sorry unzipping extracting and using it in the other machine. Right. Yeah. So let us say I have transferred 100 files from machine A to machine B and how do I make sure that all the files are copied properly? Mm. So uh, let us say... It will show you the progress there, 100% right that uh, uh, it, it won't help us to earn that in this case? Uh, yeah, it will show but um, maybe some problem, network problem is there and the packets are not copied properly and maybe the file is corrupted, right? That also can happen. Oh. Okay. So there is a command called CKSum. CKSum, okay. CKSum is checksum. Okay. CKSum, let us say data. CKSum 1. Okay. CKSum and the file name. We so start. CKSum will basically generate a number from the okay. size of the file. From the size of no. the file or. <coughs> so, if I execute same thing on the remote machine, this number should match. Okay. okay. Yeah, got here, yeah. here and there. So then only it is like the file is copied properly. Even yeah. though size is same, sometimes size will be same, but uh, the file might not be copied properly. So in okay. your shell scripting, if you are copying some file from some location to other location, the next thing we want we need to do is we need to compare the checksums and see okay. they are they are properly copied. Uh, um, um, Santosh, uh, I will I will practice these commands today. What we have in this okay. class, and yeah. we can continue with the later tomorrow. Okay. Okay. So fine. Yeah. Okay. Thank stop you, Santosh. Here? Yeah, we'll okay. stop here. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye.